So this project started out on a Friday night around 10 p.m. I had just finished my basketball game when I realized it was supposed to rain all weekend. So I grabbed my Sharpie, my tape measure, and my circular saw and went ahead and broke down the sheet goods into four man manageable sized pieces. Now breaking them down lets me easily work with them in the shop and store them in the shop without having a large 4x8 sheet. Instead I just have two 2x8 two by two by sheets. So I ripped them down and stored them in the shed for the night. And as forecasted, it rained, and it rained all weekend long, so I'm glad I ripped those plywood sheets down before it started to rain. Now once I got into the shop, I first cut all my plywood into their final widths, and then I was able to cut them to their final lengths. Now to cut them to their lengths, I first marked the line with my 12, 16 inch combination square. And then I was able to take it to my radial arm saw to cut it. And because of their wide widths, I had to cut half of the line on one side and then flip the piece over to cut the other half. Now the size of your chest can vary. Mine ended up being 5 feet wide, 2 feet deep, and 2 feet tall. Now once you get all the pieces cut, you can go ahead and start edge banding all the visible plywood edges. Uh, this is the first time that I ever ed edge band and it turned out really good. Uh, I learned some things and I will definitely uh, invest in one of those devices that you cut the excess edge banding off. Uh, so once I ironed on the edge banding on all the visible faces, I was able to then cut off the ends with my oscillating tool and then sand the overhang off the plywood off with the sander. Once I had everything edge banded, I created a simple arch in the front and back panels. I just grabbed a scrap of the material, traced it, and then I cut it out with a jigsaw. After I cut it out, I went through different, multiple different sanding methods to smooth out the arch. And I wish I would have been more pristine with my jigsaw cut, but it still turned out good. After I had those two angles cut, I could begin assembling the carcass of the blanket chest, the hoop chest. Uh, I used these Rockler 90 degree clamping kit and it worked very well. Uh, first what I did is I attached uh, my end piece to the clamps and then I moved that piece with the clamps already attached to the edge and clamped it in place there. Once I had it clamped down, I would then flip it over so I could get to the, what would be the front or back side, whichever way you choose, and I would pre-drill and countersink in some one and a half inch screws.
After I assembled the carcass, I then could install the base. I measured off about four inches from the bottom of the carcass and drew a line. Then I cut some cleats that I could then attach at that point that would hold the two edges of the base up. And before installing the bottom itself, I drilled a few pocket holes along the long sides that I could screw into the carcass because there isn't enough room for a cleat to go all the way across the bottom. Once I had the pocket hole drilled, then I could drop the top into the, or drop the bottom into the carcass, uh, make sure it's all flush, and then screw it into place. Now I was afraid there'd be too much flex between the two plywood sides in the middle. So I had to come up with some sort of brace. Now I didn't want to divide the cabinet, the hope chest, into two separate sections. So I cut a solid, two solid sections that would fit. And then on one of them, I drew a pocket hole screws that would then attach to the bottom and two sides. Then using some basic measurements, I created some basic lines that avoided the pocket hole screws and cut out the middle of that spacer of that support. That way there would still be access throughout the whole blanket chest for storage if you needed it. I cut out that shape with the jigsaw and then I sanded both pieces flush. So what I did, I attached with the prime surface pointed in, I attached half of those, or I attached one of those two pieces to the sides and to the bottom. And then after I had attached that, I then glued the other side with the prime face facing in to that piece screwed in. That way there would be no visible screws in the inside and no screw holes to fill on the outside. And then I clamped that in place and waited for it to dry. The next step was to put a simple molding around the bottom of the outside. Uh, the client didn't want too much decoration, but I couldn't leave the box itself plain. So I just picked up this simple, I think it was a door molding or a simple molding from the big box store and put it on three sides, the two left and right side and the front. Now once I had all the trim installed, I could move the carcass to the bottom and start work on the top. So I marked out my location for all my hinges and then using a speed square, I continued to mark them out. And then using the router, 
I was able to route out the slots for the hinges to go in. And then once those were cut with the router as close to the line as I could, I came back with the chisel, not the sharpest, but it worked, and cleaned out the groove. Once I had all that done, I was able to pre-drill with a center finding bit and screw in all the screws for the hinges. And once that was finished, I had a finished box. I then filled in all my holes, sanded it real well to 220, and then put on three coats of paint. Uh, it wasn't a hard project, and I could have done better filmings, but I did think it turned out pretty well. The inside of the hope chest is polyurethane with a water-based oil modified gloss polyurethane and the outside is painted with a white coat. And here it is, a simple hope chest. This project turned out very nice and is very simple. It only took a weekend to build and it was very cost effective. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please like, comment, and subscribe. I am halfway through my senior year in high school and things are starting to die down. So I plan to be out in the shop a lot more and produce a lot more videos. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.